Since the last video, I've had the, this antenna array up in the air and it seems to work just fine. I've got it adjusted. I had to do very minimal adjustment once it was up in the air. Uh, but there's a few finishing touches that are needed uh, to weatherproof it. This design is for California, Northern California, and the weather here is not real severe. If you had ice loading or something like that, then uh, it, it might be an issue. I don't know. But for where I'm at, this design is fine, and I'm going to seal it with some silicone on the, this connection here where the uh, SO239 is, and then I'm going to um, put some tape on here, and you'll see how I do that, and some vinyl caps on the end of the gamma tube, and I'll show you that. You can see I've already started to mark this here where I had this strap across uh, the radiating element in the gamma tube. I'm going to uh, enhance those marks a little bit with a felt tip pin here so I know exactly where it goes because I'm going to take it off to do the next step and I want to make sure it all goes back together in the same spot and it's not real critical that it be exact but this will just help The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some electrical tape from this gamma tube onto the wire that goes into the gamma tube to seal this and also to hold it in position because there's one other step I'm going to have to do. And I'm cutting it at an angle so that when it ends it, uh, it's a little bit easier to fold over and keep it in place. And as I'm doing this, I'm kind of stretching. This is this tape allows you to stretch it a little bit, and that also gives it a little bit of a a bite. One other thing I should mention is where I have this antenna located. It's easy to get up and down. So the last one I did like this, and it lasted four or five years without any problems. If you were in a more severe weather condition or or if you wanted to, to last you know 20 years you might use a different method okay so that's there the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna cut a piece of heat shrink tubing and put over the top of it which will hold this tape in place and not allow the weather to get it as much I'm going to cut this piece of uh, heat, heat shrink tubing to about the right length here. I'm going to put it just beyond that mark where the strap goes. And I've got a heat gun here. Some people use a torch, but I've got a little electric heat gun here that I'll use. Okay, that looks pretty good. It should hold it in place real nice.
gonna cinch this down tight enough so it won't come loose later on. And remember these uh, screws and so forth are made out of stainless steel to keep it from rusting. Okay, so the next thing is I have some little vinyl caps. Put on the end here to seal this end. This is um, summer in California, Northern California, and normally it does not rain here, but it's starting to sprinkle. You know, in the summer it doesn't rain at all, but we've got kind of an unusual weather condition. So now we've got the heat shrink over the tape here, that's sealed, and I've got the cap here. The other thing I've got to do is seal this um, PL259 back in here. One other thing is this connector here is exposed. I'm going to go ahead and tape that as well, and I'm going to put some wire ties around it to keep the tape from coming loose. Again, as I said, this is uh, not to go up for 20 years, but to go up for, uh, well, four or five years, and if I have problems, I'll take it down sooner, but it's easy to take up and down. So as I put this on here, I'm going to cover up the joint, and I'm going to stretch it as I go around so it conforms to the shape of the uh, connector here. I would normally just do this with the uh, tape on the roll, but since I'm kind of confined on space here, I'm cutting the tape in sections and doing it in sections. Notice as I'm going around here, I'm pulling it tight so it stretches so it conforms to the shape. I'm going to do one other small piece there. There is special tape that's made for this, but it's a little difficult to get apart once you've sealed it up, so I prefer this method. Okay, let me get some wire ties. This will just help it uh, stay in place a little longer. And all it's doing is holding the ends of the tape. So I'm going to put a few on here. and trim it up to keep it neat. Okay, and that one's done. Okay, I've got the silicone here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this connector and seal it up as best I can. I'm gonna seal up the wire as well. Good. 
Okay, there's the upper loop. I still have to do the same thing to the lower loop here. But I also wanted to show you that I did a similar taping job on these connectors for the phasing harness and attached it uh, securely to the mast. This is where the feed line will connect. Okay, I'm not going to show this uh, weather sealing of the second one because it's just a repeat of the same process. One other thing I did want to show though is at the top of this mast is one other antenna. This is a small antenna for 900 megahertz. So it'll just run above these two loops. One other thing I didn't show is remember I made this loop as kind of a choke but I also put one of these snap-on toroid cores on here to keep stray RF from flowing back down the outside of the shield. I went ahead and put some tape over this clip-on toroid because I don't know how uh, susceptible the plastic is to UV rays so this will keep the UV rays off and I also put some wire ties on it to help keep it on there and I put wire ties on the uh, on this choke just to keep things secure okay there's the uh, antennas up in the air uh, if you can see the little 900 megahertz at the top the two loops are up the bottom loop is up about 25 feet. The next thing to do is go into the shack and check it out. Here's a shot from a different angle. To give you a better idea. Okay, here I am in the shack. I've got the radio going. Let's try to stay out of the way here. Let's put it on the frequency that we were on before. 144.230. I'm going to put it on FM. There's nobody there. Turn up the squelch to stop that. This is the meter we're going to be looking at. Let's put it to calibrate. And I think I've got to get it set. Let's key down. That looks good. I'll go to SWR. And I'm a little bit over 1.1 to 1. If you can see that move there. Looks like I'm interfering with another radio up here. Anyway, that's that's pretty good. It's not quite as good as it was uh, when I had it up in the air the first time, so I must have affected something. Still good. Let's go ahead and go back to upper sideband, open the squelch and go to our beacon. It's about, I think it was 45 miles away. And we got a pretty good signal. It changes throughout the day as far as strength. Let's see here. But that's good. I think it's uh, real acceptable. See if there's somebody on. Yeah, I've been checking mine with different loads, and uh, on high power I'm drawing 4 amps, and on low power I'm drawing 2 amps. Ah, huh. there are the antennas matching and good. Well, you'll have ways to check the stuff you are. Well, I try different antennas. I tried the disco, then I tried in the um, low, the low element beam, which is on a separate coax. Then I tried a quarter wave whip and they all are about the same.